All right, so this morning's run was six miles at a seven minute and 43 minute per mile pace. This is probably the run where my legs felt more heavy than ever before because less than 24 hours ago, I did 75 miles on the bike. So yesterday morning, 75 miles on the bike, directly into this morning, which was a six mile run for time. It's humid as shit still, and it's, um, I think tomorrow, tomorrow is October 1st. Look at my shorts. These are my running shorts right here. These were a nice light green before I started, and this is the sweat that accumulates in my pants during a run. That is, uh, that's all, that's all frontal and back sweat. Welcome to the video. Assembling another two composite wood packing stations right now getting ready for Black Friday and just pretty much launches or any heavy volume in general We need more packing stations. So uh, we're gonna have a total of four at all times um, So that's really what we're doing now. We're just getting these screwed in So when we plan for a sale like Black Friday, it has to be at least 12 weeks out to place production orders. Typically we plan sales like 20 weeks out. So we project that Black Friday this year is gonna be our, our biggest sale of all time. So like we've doubled sales in the past 12 months. We've, we've doubled our growth in the past 12 months. Uh, and we have some really exciting things coming up like uh, and in November, we have our full-time videographer, photographer joining the team, Jordan Utter, who filmed my half Iron Man video. So he's moving down, him and his his soon-to-be wife are moving from Ohio to Texas to join the team. And then for Black Friday, we are launching, on top of our sale, we're launching our New Way Protein flavor, which is the fruity cereal. It's one of the most realistic tasting flavors of, of protein we've ever done. Like if you imagine uh, your favorite fruity cereal, I can't say the name because it's trademark issues, but your favorite fruity cereal growing up and the milk in that bowl that's left over, that's exactly what it tastes like. So. We're launching that on Black Friday. We have bars launching, protein bars, the field bar launching uh, in two weeks. So those arrive this week to our facility. There's a lot going on and a lot of preparation to do to be ready for, for Black Friday. Now, as you can probably see from the title of this video, it is titled, How to Run Faster. And there's probably a million and one tips that I could provide or someone else could provide, an expert in running, but I'm gonna give you three tips. Just three tips to focus on to improve your running to be able to run faster. Now, I'm gonna preface this by saying, and this is not one of the tips, I'm not gonna focus on footwear, shoes, or running technique and form. But what I do recommend is that you go to like a local running store. Most of the time, like the people that work there and that own those shops are running experts and have years and years of experience in running and can recommend a, a footwear or a shoe that complements your running form. And then also they can watch your run and then dissect it and like critique it to make improvements to your run, whether that's like where you're foot strike is or how your arms are moving or if you're staying upright and leaned over a little bit. But I will tell you, like what I have found over years is that the longer I run, like say I just started running, my body will find its natural groove of efficiency. But there are definitely places that you can put emphasis of improvement. So find a local running store or shop, have them recommend shoe and footwear, and then watch your running form. All right, so the first thing to talk about is the warm up. And when I talk about warm up, I'm not saying like a toe touch on the edge of a track or a butterfly in your bedroom before you go out on a run. This is like an intense burst of energy to get your oxygen levels right and balanced. And I think the best way to describe it is I'm sure if you run before, you've been in this experience or if you've felt this, like I have felt this before. Like say I go from a resting state, tie my shoes, start running and within the first two to four minutes, all I feel is complete imbalance. Like nothing feels right, nothing feels good. My heart rate is jacked up and elevated. My breathing is 
short, shallow, and rapid and quick. And like I'm trying to control my breathing and everything feels off and I feel like heavy and slow and like, I can't breathe right. But then after those two to four minutes, you start falling into a rhythm. You start breathing properly again. You start feeling a little bit better. You find your rhythm. Like what causes this? Well, like if you go from resting to running, your legs require oxygen. They, they're like, give me oxygen. Like all this cardiovascular training, I need oxygen. So like your oxygen goes to your legs. So then you're, you know, you're, you're breathing short, shallow, and quick because you're trying to balance out that, that deficit of, of oxygen. And that's what causes that. So like, how do you fix this? Like you have a warm up going into your run or your race. Like if you're doing a 5K, half marathon, or full marathon, like this is something you should definitely be doing before one of those races or even just like your regular runs because you start out balanced. Like your oxygen levels are balanced between your muscles and your lungs and your breathing and everything feels good. So like five to 20 minutes before you go from that run, you start that race, you just spend some time doing some like intense bursts of, of, of runs or little sprints and you get your breathing in check and like you have oxygen going to your legs and you're learning how to breathe in that, that oxygen deficit and you find that balance so that when you go into that run or that race then, you've already found that balance. So like that's one of my, my biggest tips how to run faster is incorporate a warm up before you go into that run or race. Because if you don't, that first like two to four minutes, you're gonna be trying to find your breathing. Like you're gonna be trying to find that balance and it's gonna, it's gonna set you off pace for the remainder of that time. Tip number two is use speed work. Now whether you're training for like a, a one mile run, a 5K, half marathon, full marathon like I said, speed work is still important. So you have mileage, right? Like your mileage, if you're training for a marathon, you have to get a certain number of miles in per week. You need those long, slower distance runs to build endurance, to build stamina. But speed work is still super important. And like, why is that? What is speed work for one? Like speed work can be intervals. So say you're running five miles and every time you hit the mile mark, you do a quarter mile of an increased intensity. Or maybe you go to the track and you do 400 meter repeats, uh, sprints, or you go to a hill and you do hill sprints. Uh, you do like a fart -like run. Um, tempo runs where you're running say like three miles, but it is faster than race pace. Like some sort of increased intensity. Like multiple reasons why. One, it increases your body's ability to use oxygen more efficiently. And two, it is almost like strength training. So like if you think of muscles as slow twitch fiber, muscle fibers, fast twitch muscle fibers, Slow twitch muscle fibers are like where you're going to be using your longer distance, slow, slower tempo runs. Fast twitch muscle fibers are where like you're doing sprints. Like you're in the gym and you're knocking out some, some reps. That's like a fast twitch muscle fiber. Now you would think that in like, say for a marathon, for example, you're trying to hold a pace, a faster pace. Like how do you, how do you teach your body's ability to use oxygen more efficiently for a longer pace? Well, speed work, but also, like when you are running, say, a marathon and you're using primarily slow twitch muscle fibers, at some point they will get exhausted, fatigued, and burn out. And after that, your body will then switch over to fast twitch muscle fibers. It will still recruit fast twitch muscle fibers when your body you know, is tired and, and the slow twitch muscle fibers are just, hey, I'm done. And they carry you through the rest of that race. So like, how is one way to get faster? Well, focus on not only mileage, but also speed work. If you're training for a marathon and all you do is go out and do a six mile run, a 10 mile run, a 12 mile run, and keeping that same pace over and over and over again, yeah, you might get more conditioned and build your stamina, but you still need speed work. So incorporate some sort of speed work with your mileage. Tip number three is know the difference between hurt and injured. If you've spent any time in the military, you probably know exactly what I'm talking about, but being hurt, is not the same as being injured. Being hurt is when like you're running and your legs are on fire and you want to stop. Being hurt is when like you're you're doing a metcon, all right, and and you can't breathe. You're just so physically exhausted and tired. And, like like the Murph, for example, like you are hurting. That's not injured. Injured is when like you fall on the ground and the bone flies out your leg. That's being injured. It takes you out of the game. Knowing the difference between hurt and injured allows you to push past and get better, to improve. 
So like when you're training to get faster for a run, you are going to enter dark places as my triathlon coach likes to talk about. These dark places is where you grow. It's where you develop, it's where you get stronger. You should be pushing yourselves in runs, like during mileage, long distances. Once you hit mile nine, you feel like stopping. Well, you have to finish the run if you have to do 12 miles that day. Or if you do some speed work, if you're doing your eighth 400 meter repeat and you feel like you got nothing left, you gotta drive through that to get better. By getting faster, getting better, improving, there's gonna be some sort of suck, some sort of hurt involved. But knowing the difference between hurt and injured and pushing through the hurt, it's gonna make a massive difference in you improving in anything in life, but especially in running, in physical training, in fitness. You need to know the difference and know that when you're hurt, you can drive through that. Now a little bonus that I wanna add in, it's breathing techniques. Now there's a million different opinions on like proper ways to breathe while running. There is a popular like ratio of the two to two where like when you're running, you have two seconds of breathing in, two seconds of breathing out. And when you breathe, you wanna breathe like from your belly, like deep breaths, not just from like these shallow, short breaths. Like you wanna, you wanna breathe deep from like your belly. That's what you wanna focus on. But what I wanna talk about is like music while running. Now, I really don't listen to music much when I'm running anymore, but I do listen to music when I'm on the bike. Like yesterday I was on the bike for five hours, I was listening to this music, but when I'm running, I don't prefer listening to music anymore because it throws off my cadence. It throws off my, my breathing and my strides and my pace. But if I do listen to music when I'm running, and I know a lot of people do, you wanna try to find a, a song selection or a playlist that is the appropriate beats per minute in accordance with the pace of your run. So like, the way I found this out is I was on Spotify one day and I found a running playlist and they were broken down by beats per minute. So like I found the playlist 150 to 165 beats per minute. And I played that just to try something and that was directly on pace with like an 830 minute per mile pace. So like my biggest suggestion is don't just listen to anything when you're running. Try to find a playlist and you know you can go on Spotify and play a playlist that has an appropriate beats per minute in accordance to your pace for a run. Try that and it can make a massive difference because if you just listen to anything and each song is a different you know, beats per minute, it can really throw off your breathing, your pace, your cadence, everything. So try that out when you're training. It is pretty bad eye. What's up, man? Good, man. Good to see you. There's no flags around here to see where the wind is. So tell me, tell me what I'm looking at right now. So this is a, a this is a R44. It's a Raven 2. Um, yeah, this is my it's my go-to vehicle. This is how you travel. This is how I travel. Like if you can't have me laying there, I'm not coming to see you. Good business expense. Yeah, yeah, it's a really good business. Expense. Really good for taxes. Another amazing, amazing Monday. And uh, Dakota Meyer flew his helicopter over here. If you don't know who Dakota is, um, he might've been living under a rock for the past couple of years, but he was a US Marine Medal of Honor recipient and uh, he's Austin based. So we've been doing some things together lately. We, uh, we put a podcast on together. We're gonna create some content here in the future after Iron Man prep kind of calms down in the next, it's crazy to say, but we're about four weeks out and uh, it was great to have him here for a few hours, talk, hang out. But now I'm going home and I want to show you something Steph and I recently picked up that has changed our our diet, our daily diet. You gotta see this. You gotta. Well, I wish you could try it, but you gotta at least see it. So what we have here is a Traeger wood pellet grill and smoker. So. Uh, the way it runs is there's wood pellets, like I just put in here. We have mesquite wood pellets in the hopper right now. You control the heat right here, so we have it at um, 
set for 225, it's about 228 right now, you can control this through an app and it lights the wood pellets and creates an amazing smoke and flavor in here. Like this right now smells like a campfire. So we're making some, some burgers right here. So we'll cook these for about 45 minutes to an hour at like 225. Now let me tell you, I'm showing you this grill. Uh, this is not sponsored. I bought this Traeger with my own money. But for the past couple months, I've been debating whether or not to buy this grill and smoker because I know there's a lot of hype built up behind it, but I didn't know if it was gonna be worth the price tag. So it's like, it's a thousand dollar grill. Um, and I was holding off cause like, there's no way it's, it's worth that much money for a grill. Well, I'll tell you, I've used it for two nights in a row right now. We did ribs the first night. We did steak last night, doing burgers tonight. The steak last night, was the best steak I've ever had in my life. Like hands down. I've never had a steak better than, than that at a restaurant or anywhere else. This thing is amazing. It makes amazing meats and I'm probably going to use it five out of the seven days a week. And I cannot wait to eat these burgers tonight. But I'll tell you the smell that it, it lets off. Like you feel like you're at a campfire, a campsite. It's so good. If you have a Traeger in the comments below, let me know your thoughts and what your favorite thing to make is because I'm loving everything so far. Hey now. All right, so for the taste test, I'm, uh, I'm from Pennsylvania, so I'm going to cover my burger and catch up. Now Preston has told me the best cheeseburger he's ever had came off a Traeger grill. A massive burger fan, by the way, massive burger fan. One bite, everyone knows the rules. It's got some great smoke, super tender. One of the best investments I've ever made in my life. That's the video, hope you guys enjoyed it. See you in the next one.